Hey everybody, Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to the long-awaited return of the Fire Red Leaf Green 386 challenge. And sure enough, we're coming back to a really difficult Pokemon. Yikers. As we're working with the baby portion of the Johto decks, we're working with Cleffa today. Cleffa's only got six moves to choose from when looking at the level up moveset, which is shockingly an improvement from Ruby and Sapphire, having added Magical Leaf at level 17. And yeah, I'm sure you're already making the connection for Brock and Misty. It at least gets a good selection of TMs though, having access to moves like Shockwave, Return, Water Pulse, Fire Blast, and Dig, probably the most useful out of those lists. But the fact that it can't learn Ice Beam is going to be a real problem once we get up to Lance during the Pokemon League, but we've got plenty of time before we have to worry about that. In case you forgot the rules to this series of challenges, let me give you a little bit of a refresher. Rule 1, I can only use Cleffa in battle, though HM mules are allowed in the party. Rule number 2, no items in battle, though held items and items outside of battle are allowed. And rule 3, no glitches. But most of all, we gotta have fun, so let's get down to business. I also did a bit of experimenting here and recorded this entire run on my laptop to see how capable it was for doing stuff like this. And sure enough, it looked like crap. I just bought a new one and will be using it next week. Anyway, I modified the game with the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to change Squirtle into Cleffa, and easily used Charm and tackled my way through the rival battle. But I, uh, forgot to record that part. Whoopsie. Fortunately, I realized that pretty quickly and recorded the Viridian Forest. Nothing crazy in here either. Honestly, I just needed to grind until Cleffa hit level 17 and learned Magical Leaf, the key to winning both this and the next gym. This took around 55 minutes, getting to Brock in slightly over an hour when you include the initial get through the beginning areas section. I'm sure you saw this coming, but both Brock's Geodude and Onyx are one shots with Magical Leaf, getting Clebby here to level 18 and getting me the Boulder Badge. One down, seven to go. I initially tried skipping trainers to get to Cerulean City faster, but I ended up being a dunce and forgot to get repels from Pewter before Mount Moon, running into a few of them without thinking. Though I did manage to pull off some thinking and grab the Spearow for the trade in Vermilion here on Route 3 before running into Mount Moon, using a single escape rope to heal back up and repel through the rest of the cave and arriving on Route 4. Since Clef is a normal type, the two move teeters here are actually really useful in giving me a powerful stab move until I have access to the TM for return. So I replaced Charm with Mega Punch, going on my merry way over to Cerulean City and trying the gym. I actually got through the chainers very easily thanks to Magical Leaf, but Misty Starmie was a bit too much to handle without status afflictions, aka the reason I kept Sing instead of Charm. She leads with Staryu as I go with Sing, putting it to sleep after using Harden and KOing after some healing shenanigans and Magical Leafs. Second out is Starmie, and since it's faster it pulls off Water Pulse for nearly half as I put it to sleep, hitting two more Magical Leafs before it woke up and hit me with a second Water Pulse, nearly taking me out, but I managed to land another Magical Leaf that turn, KOing and winning the, the Cascade Badge. I don't think too many of the Pokemon so far have been able to beat Misty before going into the rival fight, so it's pretty impressive for a baby Pokemon of all things to do so. Well, oh, it's time to fight a rival, and he's got four Pokemon like usual, but nothing I can't handle, I'm sure. I lost the first time getting to his last Pokemon, but the second time worked out. He leads with Pidgeotto, going to sleep after a sing and going down to two Mega Punches and a Magical Leaf. Next out is Rattata, going down to two Magical Leafs, Abra's a one-shot with Mega Punch, and Bulbasaur is a two-shot, with the last hit being a crit after he missed with Sleep Powder and hit with Leech Seed. I'm actually surprised that Mega Punch didn't keep missing a whole bunch after Pidgeotto hit that Sand Attack, so that was a really good battle. Routes 24 and 25 didn't give me as much trouble as it gave me EXP, so I grabbed the SS ticket and moved onward, grabbing the TM for Dig while going south to Vermilion City, where the unabashed destruction of the SSN awaits. Again with another rival battle, though. I'm almost thinking of a headcanon of this series that Red's is just so bored of how weak the region is that he could defeat everyone again and again with a single unevolved Pokemon in an effort to get them to shape up, but they never do, causing his retreat from society and into Mount Silver. Makes sense to me, not like we get an explanation in the actual games. Crazy thought aside, Rival 3 isn't too hard, as he leads with Pidgeotto again using Sand Attack, but I managed to land Mega Punch, so I went for Magical Leaf, seeing it as it's ignoring accuracy, taking it out, and leading to Raticate. It uses Twail Whip, so I went for Dig and nailed a Mega Punch to take it out after a Hyper Fang. Third out is Kadabra, outspeeding and disabling Mega Punch, so I just went for Dig, missing and getting it disabled as well but I managed to land a Mega Punch to take it out. 
Last up is Ivysaur, outspeeding and managing to put me to sleep with Sleep Powder and hitting a Vine Whip before I went for Dig. Missing, and Mega Punch. Missing. But I managed to nail one more, getting a crit and KOing and winning the match. Honestly, I shouldn't have won that one, but that Crutch Critical really helped in allowing me to pull through. Well, I guess I have Dig already, so I can go ahead and fight Surge, with him leading with Voltorb. I went for Magical Leaf, KOing in two shots after getting hit with two Sonic Booms, leading to Pikachu. I would have gone for Dig, but it has Static, so two Magical Leafs were plenty enough to take it down, leaving just Raichu. I went for Dig this time, but of course it immediately went for three double teams. However, I managed to hit two Digs in a row after missing the first one, KOing, and winning the fight. I should have lost that one too. I shouldn't have been able to hit two moves in a row after three double teams, but I guess it's not a chaotic meatball run without some luck. I'm sure you know the routine by now. Take out the trainers on Route 11, go back to Route 9 and 10, take out the Rock Tunnel, grab the TM for return south of Lavender Town, and Route 8 before finally running into Celadon. I wanted to get the TM for Flamethrower before fighting Erica, but I was short a few thousand Poké Dollars, so I figured I'd rob Team Rocket and take theirs. The grunts were easy, and Giovanni himself is actually just as easy, with both Onyx and Rhyhorn being one-shots with Magical Leaf, leaving just Kangaskhan. It's a menace to be sure, nailing two Mega Punches as I use two returns, but Cute Charm activates, stunning his Kangaskhan for the turn and allowing me to KO with return for the win. I would have lost if it wasn't for that ability, or he would have missed. I had a decently high statistical odds for winning that fight at that point. After that, I was still unable to buy that TM, so I fought the double battle on Route 15, grabbed Fly while I was up there, and now I should be able to get enough money from the trainers in the gym itself. But I decided to be cheeky and actually challenged Erica with a Cherry Berry as my held item, and it worked pretty decently. She leads with Victory Bell, taking massive damage from return as it went for Stun Spore, hence why I used the Cherry Berry. She healed, allowing me to KO in two more returns, leading to Tangela, who's a one-shot critical with return, so Vileplume's last out. Sure enough, it also has Stun Spore, getting it off, but I didn't get paralyzed for any of the rest of the match, hitting two returns even through a Giga Drain to win the fight. I guess I didn't need to buy all of those coins since I'll be getting Fire Blast from Blaine, but hey, it might be useful at some point in between. Would be nice if I could just get Ice Beam though, but I guess not. Pokemon Tower time and my rival's in the way, but guess what, he's literally just a straight shot with return, nothing else. I just mashed A, and it was great. Unfortunately though, I don't have any good moves for the Ghastlies and Haunters throughout the tower, so I finally replaced Sing with Water Pulse to give me a good move to take them out, allowing me to rescue Mr. Fuji and get the Poke Flute. I actually tried to fight the boatload of trainers throughout the Sylph Company right now, but I think it's not quite time to go in there, so I took out the Fighting Dojo before jumping back in. After taking out the dozens of trainers in the building, I stopped just short of Rival 5. There is no way I'm beating him right now, not a chance. I tried and I didn't get far at all numerous times. So I went ahead and fought literally every trainer on routes 12, 13, 14, 15, and Cycling Road, both sides leading to Fuchsia City. Well, I may as well just destroy this gym if I'm here. It shouldn't be that bad anyway, right? The trainers weren't bad, and neither was Koga, only taking a single try, actually. He leads with a level 37 coughing, which is just short of a KO with return, so I hit two water pulses to KO after healing. Next out is Muck, which is two shot with return after attempting minimize, leading to the second coughing. It poisoned me, but it was a two shot with water pulse, leaving just wheezing. I hit a return for a bit over half as he hit me with Sludge, taking me down to just 21 HP, and the poison took me down to literally 1 HP, barely letting me finish it off with a second return. Literally the closest a battle can get. It always seems to be in these 3d6 challenges though. I healed up and grabbed the HMs from Fuchsia and moved back to the Rival 5 battle. Sadly though, I still get my bum handed to me over and over again, so I got a little bit desperate. I grabbed the Gift Eevee and a Water Stone so that I could use Vaporeon to surf towards Cinnabar and take out the trainers on the way, as well as the Pokemon Mansion and in the gym leading to the fight with Blaine himself. The TM for Water Pulse really helped me here, being a one-shot on both Growlithe and Ponyta, as well as a two-shot on Rapidash and a two-shot on Arcanine. Can't say I'm surprised, Blaine's usually easy. I was going to try to fight Rival 5 before heading off to the Sevi Islands, but I accidentally clicked yes and went to the Sevi Islands anyway. But I didn't fight a ton of trainers before rescuing Lost L and heading back to the mainland. I tried fighting him again and lost, which made me snap, so I just used all of my rare candies I had gotten so far, getting Clef at a level 79, and I think now 
it finally allowed me to win. I think. He leads with Pidgeot, which I outspeed and nail with Return and a Water Pulse to finish it, leading to Gyarados. It's a three shot with Return, since Pidgeot hit a Feather Dance and Gyarados adds Intimidate. Probably should have taught Clef a Shockwave before this battle. Probably would have let me win earlier, but hey, hindsight's 2020. Growlithe is out next, and it's a one shot with Water Pulse, leading to Alakazam. It may have trash defense, but Return is still his two shot, leading just Venusaur. It's a four shot, two returns, one Water Pulse, and a return, even through Sleep Powder. I was worried it was kinda KO of Cleffa, but it was pretty incompetent, so it was pretty easy to win the battle. Giovanni straight after, and I can't say that it was hard, since Nidorino was a one-shot with return, Nidoqueen's a two-shot despite hitting a tail whip and a double critical double kick, leaving me to Kangaskhan, who decided to be an idiot using tail whip instead of an attacking move and allowing me to KO it pretty quickly, leaving just Rhyhorn to go down to a single magical lead. Finally, with that, the Saffron Gym is open. I literally skipped every trainer, leaving just Sabrina, because I wanted to get this challenge done. She leads with Kadabra, and despite being less than half my level, it still outsped and used Reflect, but still went down to a single return. Trash defense is always trash defense. Next out is Mr. Mime, barely surviving a return, despite being also less than half my level, using Barrier and Healing to make Return a 3-shot. She hit Psybeam and healed, finally leading to Reflect disappearing and letting me KO with Return. Next out is Venomoth, and a one-shot, and Alakazam, also a one-shot. Never doubt the ability of a Psychic-type's defenses to always suck. One more gym to go, and Giovanni again isn't that bad. All of his Pokémon are ground-types, so Water Pulse is a great option for me, hence why I held on to it for so long. His first Rhyhorn's a one-shot, Nidoqueen's a two-shot, only hitting a light Earthquake. Nidoking does the same, though its Earthquake hit a bit harder, so I got him to waste a Hyper Potion on it. Next out is Doug Trio, a one-shot with Water Pulse, leaving just Rhyhorn, and oh look, that's a one-shot. Gotta love having a wide variety of moves. Man, I just realized we've already gotten through the gyms this quickly, but that doesn't mean we have some long battles ahead of us. Oh no, there's still a lot here. First of which is Rival 6, and this battle whipped my bum several times. Actually, not as many as I would say, because the fourth time was the charm. He leads with Pidgeot, and since I taught Clef a Shockwave, it's a two-shot leaning to Rhyhorn. It's a one-shot with Water Pulse, and Gyarados is a one-shot with Shockwave after hitting Hydro Pump. Growlithe is a one-shot with Water Pulse, and here's where the hard part of the battle begins. I actually got pretty lucky on Alakazam, getting him to use Calm Mind and missing Disable as I two-shot it with Return, leaving just Venusaur. I also gave it Fire Blast in replace of Magical Leaf, and that was a great decision here, as the first time I landed it, I got the burn, barely surviving his Razor Leaf, and allowing me to hit one last return for the win. Sweet. <laughs> but after that, I know for darn sure, I don't have a chance at the Elite Four yet. So I decided to grab the Rare Candy from Fuchsia City, as well as taking out the trainers on Victory Road, on both routes that lead to the Seafoam Islands, as well as the Sevi Islands before finally settling on level 92. I wanted to see if I could do it lower than the max level, but we'll see. Lorelei took a few tries, but it was pretty easily achievable thanks to the power of some luck and Shockwave. First out is Dugong, and unfortunately it's a range of a two-shot. So it ends up being a three-shot, leading to a full restore and a two-shot afterwards, landing a few surfs before leading to Cloyster. It has abysmal special defense, so I'm able to one-shot with Shockwave, leading to Slowbro. It takes over half damage as it used Amnesia, so I opted for return to attempt a KO, but barely missed it, leading to a second Amnesia. But for some reason, she didn't go for a full restore, so I just KO'd with the return. Weird. Fourth out is Lapras, a three shot with Shockwave, even through a Citrus Berry, leaving me with literally only five HP. Last out is Jinx, missing with Double Slap as I went for Fire Blast, KOing and winning the match. <laughs> Glad I didn't get KO'd with that Double Slap. I would have been slightly annoyed if I didn't win there. But we've got four more battles to handle. Sadly though, Bruno is a big ol' pain in the bum. His lead onyx isn't bad at all, going down to a single Water Pulse, but his Hitmonchan's Sky Uppercut was way too powerful for me. Seriously, making me have to wait for an attempt where he missed with it. It wasn't too hard to get that to happen, only taking two attempts, finally getting an attempt to land a return, and shockingly enough, he missed again giving me a free pass to Hitmonlee. Brick Break still does over half, but Fire Blast managed to burn it and make it not a two-shot on me, as I finished it with Return, leading to Machamp. 
Return is a two shot thanks to a crit, but he healed after missing Rock Tomb, so I hit another one, then nailed yet another critical return to KO, leaving just his last Onyx. And thank the Lord he didn't hit that last Iron's Hail, since this was literally the luckiest I got in this battle, allowing me to KO with a Water Pulse. Alright, three more battles. Sadly though, actually Agatha's not too bad. <laughs> We're not there yet, as her team can be hit by all of my special attacks. Gengar is her lead, going for double team, though I managed to hit Fire Blast through it, going for Shockwave next turn, as if not to test fate. So she went for Confuse Ray, but since I had a Person Berry equipped, she wasted her turn, allowing Cleffa to KO scot-free. Next out is Golbat, going for Air Cutter and hitting it twice as I two-shot it with Shockwave, leading to Arbok. It's the last non-ghost type on her team, so I used Water Pulse, confusing it and getting it to hit itself, KOing with a Fire Blast. Fourth out is Gengar number two, hit and missing a Hypnosis as I went for Fire Blast, doing more than enough to damage to run her through her Citrus Berry, hitting a second one after a Sludge Bomb, leaving just her Haunter. It also misses with Hypnosis, so I went for Water Pulse, hitting that three times through a second Hypnosis miss, winning the fight. Fortunately, that one only took nine attempts, but I'm almost getting to the point where I think I might have to use Double Team. But of course, I won't do that unless I'm at the max level and I can't do it on this round. Sadly though, this said run ends with Lance. I literally couldn't survive enough attacks at this level. Even with the Click Claw, I wasn't unable to pull through. So I decided to grind in the Victory Road, going to level 98 before going back in. Victory Road is a pretty easy place to train thanks to having super effective attacks on just about everything other than Machop and Machoke, so it wasn't too bad. So starting back at Lorelei, I actually won at the first try. Shockwave was a one-shot with a critical on Dugong, Cloyster was a one-shot due to its pitiful special defense, Slowbro's an actual two-shot through Amnesia since both Shockwave and Return did a wee bit more damage each, Lapras was still a three-shot, hitting a Surf and Confuse Ray as well as an extra Surf before Cleffa snapped out of it and hit a final Shockwave for the KO, and Jinx being the last one going down to a single Fire Blast, even through Lovely Kiss. Bruno, sadly, is still just as bad though. Onyx is still a one-shot with Water Pulse, but Sky Uppercut is still a two-shot on me. So I had to take time and wait until I got another attempt where Hitmonchan missed twice, taking another 16 attempts. It's quite weird that Bruno is literally the hardest one here in this league for Kalefa, but at least it's made a little bit easier since Hitmonlee's a one-shot with Return rather than a two-shot, leaving just the threat of Machamp. Fortunately, it has fairly inaccurate moves in both Rock Tomb and Cross Chop, so as I outsped and hit a critical return, not even having to rely on a miss, leading to a one-shot on Onyx with Water Bulls winning me the match. Third up is Agatha, being pretty easy with the advancement in levels, taking out everything and getting me back to the big, bad Lance. It took me a good 25 attempts, but I finally got one that worked out. Gyarados is a one-shot with Shockwave, nothing too surprising there, though outspeeding is nice with the Quick Claw Pot. Aerodactyl's up next, where I managed to confuse it with Water Pulse, getting it to hit itself before KOing with a second one, leading to his Dragonite. This thing is super threatening, since the most powerful move I have for it is a neutral, non-stab, 60 power electric move, thanks to Gyarados' Intimidate. But it wasn't too bad, since I got a critical return, letting a Citrus Berry pop off, and then my Quick Claw activated, so I went for Water Pulse, confusing it, but it doesn't hit itself. Actually, this is what I needed it to happen, as now it's in range to not heal, but in range to be KO'd by return. So I do so, being left with only 37 HP and still needing to fend off his two Dragonairs. The first one is a two-shot, hitting Outrage and leaving me with only 3 HP, but the second one is a crit and the win, let's go! Oh man, I was so scared about that one. I'm glad I got a critical frame at the end of that fight. I may as well explain that real quick, as Gen 3 games run off of frames where RNG is consistently ran throughout those said frames, so certain frames can lead to criticals, shinies, po Pokemon in the wild, whatever really. It's still lucky, but you're likely to have a critical frame once at least every one and a half seconds from my test. Anyway, final battle time, and surprisingly, he's not as hard as Lance, taking only 6 attempts. The biggest test was getting past his Pidgeot without a ton of accuracy and attack drops though since Alakazam usually uses Reflect and makes Return a 3-shot, but this attempt ended up being what I needed. He leads with Pidgeot, going for Sand Attack as I use Shockwave, bypassing it and getting hit with Feather Dance. Now usually I wouldn't win one of these, but I had a great Alakazam battle, getting it to use Future Sight as I nailed it with a critical Fire Blast leading to Rhydon. 
It's a one-shot with Water Pulse, and Gyarados is a strong two-shot with Shockwave, making him waste two full restores before I got a crit to one-shot. Fifth is Arcanine, and my Quick Claw popped here, and sure enough, I got the confusion on Water Pulse that I needed to keep my health high enough for his last Pokemon, getting it to hit itself and getting a follow-up Water Pulse to the face to get to his last Pokemon, Venusaur. It uses Growth, surprisingly, so I went for Fire Blast and missed. But the second one connects with a burn as he sets up Sunny Day, writing his own demise as after a full restore as now Fire Blast is powered up, giving me the damage boost I need for a one-shot and the win, cementing Clefa's place in the Hall of Fame, with no double team to be seen. Honestly, I am shocked that Clefa did not need double team. This and Pichu were really impressive in getting by without the need of it, and is actually giving me some confidence that the rest of them won't actually be too too bad. Well, Aside from Togepi, but we won't have to worry about that one for now. Anyway, let's look at the leaderboard. I adjusted it to make all of the times for the Pokemon to be the initial entry into the Hall of Fame, rather than Elite Four Round 2, though I decided to expand this to have several other columns, as now we have a column for use of Double Team, as well as the level that they entered the Hall of Fame both times, with Jinsho in a large margin of a lead. Will anything be able to catch up to it? Well, I'm sure Pokemon with no evolutions and legendaries are going to do better than it, but we'll see since we've got a ton more runs ahead of us before being able to make an accurate leaderboard. Anyway, next time on the 386 Challenge, I'll be playing through the game with Igglybuff, a similar, albeit worse version of Cleffa. See you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, as literally 83% of you guys aren't subscribed, and I thought that was awfully high. If you really enjoyed it and want to help me support making more content like this, then be sure to follow me on both Twitch and Twitter, and perhaps consider tossing me a few bucks in the form of either a Patreon pledge, Twitch subscribe, or a YouTube channel membership. Everything helps, and it keeps my lights on, and it gets you access to videos 24 hours early. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great rest of your week, everybody.